let us turn our attention again to the same topic that which we, we have been discussing last week and last week we have been discussing uh, about the importance of the holy spirit the importance of the holy spirit and uh, the ministries of the holy spirit right and uh, we were reading some of the verses from bible and uh, we were just studying about many things about the holy spirit and what the holy spirit can do in our life and what is the what are the ministries of the holy spirit i mean so we we studied and we discussed many things last week and today uh, we are again uh, uh, going to that portions and uh, i will be continuing the same topic but the other points you know last week uh, we could cover the three ministries of the holy spirit three ministries of the holy spirit like uh, the ministry of regeneration and the ministry of the teaching and illuminating ministry and the third one was the ministry of making conviction about sin righteousness and judgment sin righteousness and judgment amen and today let us go to the fourth ministry of the holy spirit the fourth ministry of the holy spirit and that is the ministry of direction so listen you know when why we are studying about the importance of the holy spirit in our lives you know today uh, some of our uh, uh, some of our friends and families are not able to attend here but they are i mean uh, joining uh, through zoom even though we will pray for them and even you know when when we come together listen about why should we study and why should we understand the importance of the holy spirit in a believer's life because we understand in trinity father god is there son god is there and the holy spirit is there so these three things are there at the same time what the spirit of the lord what the holy spirit can do in our life in this present day in this present day god is working father god is working jesus christ is working at the same time what is the ministry of the holy spirit in our life in this present day I mean, so the fourth i mean ministry of the holy spirit is the ministry of direction ministry of direction let me ask you one thing that why should we need the direction of the holy spirit why should we need the direction of the holy spirit in our life that's because we have limited ability we have limited knowledge and we have limited strength okay so that's the first thing that we need the power of the holy spirit and we need the presence of the holy spirit and we need the direction from the holy spirit you know we we do not know anything about our future we do not know what is going to happen in our future and we have a limited knowledge about the things we have a limited knowledge about the things things and we have only a limited strength in our life and we don't have that much ability to do something extra that means supernatural things you know we cannot do anything supernatural but when the spirit of the lord is coming upon us and when the spirit of the lord is directing the directing a believer then that person will do something more what we are doing now I mean so that's the reason that we need the presence of the holy spirit and the presence and the power of the holy spirit and because you know the, the other thing that we understand when jesus was talking about the holy spirit he was saying that you know i will ascend from here i will go to heaven and i will ask my father to send the helper for you to send the comforter for you sending helper or sending a helper or comforter or advocate okay so god is i mean jesus is sending the the holy spirit in us because the holy spirit is an helper and the spirit holy spirit is an advocate the holy spirit can strengthen us the holy spirit can i mean i, I mean make us able to do many things Okay? so that's the reason that we are asking for the strength of the holy spirit and we are praying for the more strength of the holy spirit and also you know when jesus was speaking to the disciples jesus was saying i will send the holy spirit and now i am ascending from this world i my crucifixion will be over and after that i mean i will die and i will i mean i will be buried and after that i will be ascended so you know now at present the presence uh, the physical presence of jesus christ is not with us right the physical presence of jesus christ is not with us now that's the reason that god sent his holy spirit to guide us 
to direct us men to give the instructions in our christian life so that's the reason that we are praying 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 lord we need more power we need more presence of the holy spirit we need more direction of the holy spirit hallelujah and this morning i mean after this after i mean i mean listening this message i mean i will I request everyone to pray in the presence of god that oh lord we need more power of the holy spirit we need more presence of the holy spirit to live in this world amen so we need the direction of the holy spirit you know when um, when we, when we study the bible we understand the holy spirit is working in every person in different way so the holy spirit is giving the direction to the people in different different ways and different I mean, times okay first we read uh, uh, john chapter 16 verse 13 john chapter 16 verse 13 okay the spirit of the truth will guide you into all the truth right the spirit of the lord the spirit of the truth okay it is called as the spirit of the truth so the spirit of the truth will guide you into all the truth okay before we come to the truth let me tell you one thing you know when jesus was in this world maybe when jesus was doing his public ministry you know wherever jesus was going the disciples were following right wherever jesus was going the disciples were following and whenever the disciples were with jesus christ they were getting enough things from this world you know whatever they need everything was provided by jesus christ you know sometimes you know we understand uh, in uh, in gospels we understand about the we read about the um, i mean uh, jesus feeding the 5000 people or more than uh, 5000 people you know what was the what was the situation there there was nothing to eat okay the, the the crowd was there but there was nothing to eat but jesus was doing a miracle and providing all the needs of those people and giving the food for all those people i mean with five loaves and uh, two fishes okay so knowing that miracle and experiencing that miracle these people are always watching this jesus and when I mean, wherever jesus was moving i mean all these people were just following i mean many of the people were following only for these things and some of the people were following to listen the word of the, the sweet word of god i mean so whenever they were going even the disciples also they were always ready to accept something from the word of god at the same time they were following jesus for the material things okay many of the people they were going for that and everything was there so jesus provided everything for these people but at the same time when jesus was ascending from this earth I mean there was no they, they were not experiencing any physical i mean a uh, uh, presence of the i mean uh, of jesus christ so that's the read jesus said okay you need the direction from the lord and that direction will be given by the holy spirit I mean that's what we read here you know the spirit of the lord will come upon you and the spirit of the truth will guide you into all the truth I mean so listen very carefully you know many a times uh, we don't know i mean what to choose okay sometimes you know uh, we are confused about when I mean, what to choose is it is that truth or is that truth or something or or, or false or something we do not have any idea to i mean choose something which is truth but the holy spirit will direct you sometimes and the holy spirit will tell you and this is the truth and you have to follow this truth i mean again you know when we study about jesus we understand jesus was i mean directed by the holy spirit to the wilderness Okay, read uh, uh, Mark chapter 1 verse 12. Mark chapter 1 verse 12. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Mm. So, Jesus was, I mean, immediately draw him out into the wilderness to be tempted by devil. This is the main thing that we have to understand. You know, Jesus Christ was led by the Spirit immediately, immediately, immediately. you know after the i mean fasting draw him out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil so temptation by devil but the spirit of the lord is leading jesus into wilderness to be tempted by the devil you know sometimes this will happen in our lives also you know sometimes the spirit of the lord will lead us also into a wilderness situation or into a desert situation that there will we will have we will have the temptation from devil 
okay and that is the that is the time that we have to think about how much the spirit of the lord is encouraging us how much the spirit of the lord is strengthening us to to overcome the temptations of the devil i mean so there will be time that we will be also led by the holy spirit to the wilderness situation to to fight against the, the temptation of the of the devil when in that time i mean the spirit of the lord will encourage you the spirit of the lord will strengthen you to overcome the temptation of jesus christ just like jesus was jesus was tempted by the i mean devil and he overcome he got victory over the temptations of devil i mean and when we read a book of acts book of acts there are many things which is written that many people were receiving the direct i mean uh, directions from the lord I mean the guidance from the lord the direct uh, i mean guidance from the lord in book of acts and not only from the lord they were receiving the guidance from the holy spirit and they were acting and doing many things according to the guidance of the holy spirit in their life especially the book of acts is known as the book of holy spirit okay the book of acts is known also as the book of the holy spirit acts of holy spirit you can call it as an acts of holy spirit because you know you can see all through the i mean book of the acts uh, you can see the holy spirit and the presence of the holy spirit and the directions of the holy spirit especially we are not i mean reading all the portions which is uh, i mean you can see in the in the screen because of the lack of time i will just uh, i mean uh, uh, just read out all those portions and i'll go move okay and acts chapter 8 verse 29 we read that to philip the spirit of the lord was saying and giving the direction that go up and join the chariot of enoch okay so to philip god was giving or the spirit of the lord was move, giving a direction that philip you go up and join the chariot of enoch no we know that uh, when philip was going philip was just moving i mean towards the chariot of enoch you know this man was reading the book of isaiah Enoch was reading book of Isaiah and he was not understanding anything he was not getting anything it was a, it was the old testament book in, in in Isaiah and many things are written about Jesus Christ but this Enoch was not i mean understanding anything about um this book of Isaiah and he he doesn't know anything then the philip was asking are you getting are you understanding all those things and are you grasping all those things what you are reading then Enoch said no 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 there is nobody to interpret all these verses to me and i don't understand anything then the philip said this is the meaning of this and this is written in isaiah especially in isaiah chapter 53 it is particularly written about jesus christ about jesus christ the birth of jesus christ and how jesus christ is going to be crucified and all these things are written in isaiah and philip was saying that this is the meaning and this is the interpretation of this then what happened was only because of the direction of the holy spirit i mean this man philip for going and uh, going towards the chariot of eunuch and we see that the direction ends with the salvation and the baptism of eunuch listen when the holy spirit is leading a person when the holy spirit is directing a person and when 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 that person is obeying the guidance and the direction of the holy spirit when god will do the miracles in their life god will do something which is miraculously you know that is what we read that the, the direction of the holy spirit led him into into a, the salvation and the baptism of eunuch hallelujah so this is what we understand from the book of acts and also when you go to acts chapter 13 verse 2 acts chapter 13 verse 2 you know to the christians in antioch to the christians in antioch the spirit of the lord told them that set apart for me barnabas and saul for the work to which i have called them you know so this is the direction for the people that you have to select somebody from among you and choose them Barnabas and Saul and you have to do many things with them the spirit of the lord is giving the direction to those people and you have to choose these people i mean Barnabas and Saul and send them and send them for the work which they which we i have called them so god has a call about every one of us men so everyone those who are sitting here god has a call i mean uh, uh, of uh, every one of us and god is calling for us for some kind of ministry and some kind of work for for the for the glory of the lord when so when we are submitted in the hands of god just like Saul and 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 Saul and Silas you know i mean god can use you and me 
for the name of the Lord in the coming days. Hallelujah. That's what we read there. That direction of the Holy Spirit ends with a lot of miracles. Okay. So a lot of miracles are happening. You know, they, they, they were preaching in many places. And opposition came. And many were converted. Especially the conversion of Lydia. And the conversion of uh, the Philippine jailer. Okay? And their family members. The Philippine jailer and family members. And Lydia was a great I mean, I mean, a woman of God. And those people were converted to Christianity. Only because I mean, these people were I mean, I mean, obeying. And they were submitted their life. I mean, under the guidance and the direction of the Holy Spirit. I mean, think about all those things. And again, these people, Silas and Paul and Saul, they were imprisoned. And I mean, many miracles were happening. Miraculously, they, they, when they were in prison, they were released from the prison. Listen very carefully about that point. You know, when the Holy Spirit is giving you direction, you know, sometimes... You, I mean, we may be thinking, okay, well, all the things that which is going very smoothly is the direction of the Holy Spirit. When, when all things are comfortable and when all things are okay and when all things are I mean, going smoothly and when all things are, uh, I mean, in a, in, a, in a comfort zone and we understand, oh, this is the, this is the blessing of God and this is the uh, direction of the Holy Spirit. You know, Holy Spirit will direct you in all the ways. In different ways. You know, the Holy Spirit will direct you to the way there you can receive the blessing at the same time. The Holy Spirit will guide you and direct you into the way from where you may be receiving some afflictions in your life. Or some, I mean, problems or issues in your life. But at the same time, I mean, if you are ready to, I mean, obey the direction of God, I mean, there you will see the hand of God. There you will see the hand of God. This morning, I mean, if anybody is, I mean, having the struggles in your life, the, the people, those who are having, I mean, going through the struggles in your life, hallelujah, even though you are a believer, even though you came to Christ, and even though, I mean, you are, I mean, saying that, okay, I am worshipping God, 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 I am worshipping, and I am coming to the church every day, every Sunday, every and I am worshiping the, the almighty God. And why this problem is happening in my life. Hallelujah. Listen very carefully. Even though you are going through the struggles. I mean the spirit of the Lord is saying that. I am leading you into, into that affliction. I am leading you into that problem. You know Silas and Paul. And they were in, in, in prison. In jail. And God was using. It was, it was through the after the direction of the Holy Spirit. Right. After the direction of the Holy Spirit, they went in, inside the prison. They were imprisonment. And after that, God is using them mightily for many miraculous things. Because I mean, when we receive the direction of the Holy Spirit, when we are ready to obey the direction of the Holy Spirit, surely I mean, there will be opposition. There will be opposition, there will be persecution, there will be, I mean, struggles in our lives. But, I mean, in, 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 among all these problems, hallelujah, we will see the hands of God. We will see the, I mean, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit when we are going through all the troublesome situation. Hallelujah. And again, when you read Acts chapter, I told you that the book of Acts is also known as the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Everywhere, everywhere, the Holy Spirit is working, 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 using the children of God, using the disciples of God, using the apostles of God for the for a great ministry, for a great ministry. I mean, you know, Holy Spirit is giving the accurate direction to what to preach and what to preach. We just read Acts chapter one verse eight. Acts chapter one verse eight. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. Ah. And you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem. You shall be witness to me in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Judea. And Samaria. And in Samaria. And to the end of the world. And to the uttermost part of the world. Listen. So when the spirit, the, the promise of the spirit of God was, I mean, Jesus was promising to, to, to the disciples. Jesus said, you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Then you will witness me in Jerusalem, then in Judea, then in Samaria. And to the end of the world. That means, uh, and to the uttermost part of the world. Okay, so listen. So when Jesus was giving the direction, Jesus only said, you will go to Jerusalem, 
you will go to judea and you will go to samaria and then after that you will go many many other places but jesus never gave a time table or a time schedule and saying that okay this man peter you go to this place paul you go to this place or i mean uh, the, the other people i mean uh, philip you go to this place no no jesus did not give any schedule time schedule to go who to go to which place and uh, what to preach in one place and that place or you know when you are going to the gentile people and jewish people when I mean, this is to preach there and uh, the, i mean this man should go to that place and this man should go to that place jesus did not give any schedule any time schedule or time table for those people disciples but just said go to jerusalem go to judea go to samaria and all other parts of the world that's the only guideline that god jesus gave to them but after that you know every take every person every disciple every apostles they were going to the different 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 countries and god has blessed all the people of this world with these 12 apostles and they were going different places that was according to the guidance and the direction of the holy spirit Jesus gave only the direction that is you go to Jerusalem go to Judea go to Samaria and after that you go to all other places you know but those people during the time of Jesus Christ the apostles were they they were just planning no no we will go we will not to Jerusalem even take uh, i mean apostle uh, uh, apostle John sorry apostle uh, Paul you know he was not ready to go to Jerusalem first but the spirit of the lord led him to that place and these i mean apostles were trying to go to other places and they were saying no no we don't want to go to jerusalem because i mean in jerusalem there are many jewish people and they are i mean they they may they may persecute us and they may i mean do something against us so we are not ready to go for that but the, the spirit of the lord guided them the spirit of the lord directed them and said no you have to go to that place first time you witness in your own place in jerusalem then go to judea and samaria and in uh, uh, at the uttermost part of the world i mean so this is what we understand that you know the holy spirit will give you the direction about the right place about the right time and about the right person about the right place about the right i mean time and about the right person you know when uh, uh, sumat was sharing about uh, that you know he was uh, sharing something in the in the group also uh, uh, you know go, uh, going outside and uh, playing with the soccer or something with other people and you know um, after that we can share the, the gospel to them that's a, that's a good thing that you are bringing up you know so when the spirit of the lord is i mean moving in us and the spirit of the lord is leading you do that no problem i mean you have to do that because you know that may be the way that you can reach the people that may be the way that you can reach the people go outside and reaching the people is a different thing you know so when we think about this when we receive the direction of the holy spirit when the empowering of the holy spirit is there and when you have the presence of the holy spirit when you have the i mean power of the holy spirit i mean you will get receive the direction from the lord hallelujah and also in acts chapter 10 verses 19 and 20 acts chapter 10 verses 19 and 20 uh, to peter the holy spirit is giving the direction to peter the holy spirit is giving the direction you know peter was not ready to go to cornelius house first but we understand the holy spirit i mean gave the the, the direction to peter and said to go with three men to cornelius house men you, you, you think about that you know if he was refusing that then what would happen that whole family you know that direction of the holy spirit led them to the conversion of that whole family not only the family but many people those who gathered there the gentile people those who gathered there then you know, peter was saying no 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 i will not go to the gentiles peter said i cannot go there because i am a jew i cannot go to the gentile people i cannot share with them anything first of all when god said no 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 you have to go there then he decided to go there when the holy spirit i mean gave the direction that you have to go there you know all these verses we are not reading but you will understand all these verses it is written the direction of the holy spirit the direction of the holy spirit when we are receiving the direction of the holy spirit i mean that will i mean encourage us if you are not refusing the direction of the holy spirit again about the timothy and paul we read in in acts chapter 16 verses 6 and 7 Acts chapter 16 verses 6 and 7 Paul and Timothy were forbidden 
by holy spirit to speak word in asia listen now this also will happen when the direction of the holy spirit is coming the holy spirit will forbid us or what is it the holy spirit will uh, restrict us okay uh, to to not to do something okay not to do something so when you listen there the holy spirit was forbidding them to preach the gospel in asia so do you think that the holy spirit will will block you from preaching the gospel in a place no no but here we understand paul and paul and timothy they were forbidden to preach the gospel in asia we do not know what is the reason but god has another purpose for that when when god is saying you there okay you don't do that don't do that when the holy spirit is directing you in something that you don't do that and if you understand that that is the that is the the voice of the holy spirit you know many a times the people are not under, people are not uh, uh, able to uh, 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 differentiate the voice of the holy spirit and uh, their inner voice I mean so some people are uh, feeling something and they are doing something and there is no outcome of that and there is no result of that but when 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 we are getting some vision or when we are getting a dream make sure that that is from the holy spirit make sure that that is from the holy spirit you will see many visions or dreams or you know when you are sleeping or akka thikora sapna okka nammal kandannirikkum pache everything is not from the holy spirit everything is not the direction of the holy spirit let it be there but try to understand what is coming from the direction of the holy spirit and act, acting according to that god will use you that's what we understand when they got the direction from the holy spirit in acts chapter 16 verses 7 6 and 7 forbidden by the holy spirit to speak word in asia then they are attempting to go to bithynia but again the spirit did not allow them when so when they are planning to preach in asia the spirit of the lord said no 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 you are not supposed to go there now the time will come i will send another person now you go to another place again these people are attending to go to bithynia then the spirit of the lord said no no you are not go to you are not going to that place i am sending you to another place I mean this is the direction of god this is the direction of god hallelujah i mean so we will see that uh, later maybe you know and again you know uh, in 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 acts chapter 20 verses 22 and 23 acts chapter 20 verses 22 and 23 you know in that we understand the direction to paul apostle paul the direction to apostle paul I mean and he he was going to jerusalem according to the direction of the holy spirit and it says that he was bound in the spirit he was bound in the spirit okay bound in the spirit not knowing what will happen but holy spirit told them that there will be imprisonment there will be affliction waiting for you amen and and this is the direction of the holy spirit and and the, this is the accurate message for the people of god listen very carefully now when Paul was directed by the holy spirit the holy spirit said that you are bound with the spirit let us be bound with the spirit when we are bound with the spirit you know many things will happen in our lives many things will happen in our life you know and the marathi padirikkunnathu aatmavinal bandhikkappettavanai alle aatmavinal bandhikkappettavanai so when we are bound with the spirit when we are bound with the spirit of the lord when when the when we are bound with the holy spirit of god when god will use us at the same time what is the speciality of the direction which is given given by the holy spirit to paul there you know the holy spirit told them that i mean he said i don't know anything what is going to happen when i go to jerusalem but the holy spirit told me that there will be imprisonment and there will be affliction waiting for me I mean this is the accurate message of the holy spirit you know everything the holy spirit can tell you in everything the holy spirit can direct you I mean there is a, uh, the holy spirit did not say that, okay, that you will be you will be blessed by those people in jerusalem spirit said you go to there you go to that place you will have the affliction you will have the persecution you will have the 
imprisonment and th then that, i mean that apostle paul was ready to face all those things because he got already the direction of the holy spirit hallelujah and even today also I men let us also get that receive that direct i mean i mean uh, a direction of the holy spirit and let the, the holy spirit guide us every every one of us in uh, in our lives also hallelujah and you know uh, uh, when we study about that we understand Many times apostles and uh, uh, the, the people of God, the disciples of God, rebuking the Jewish leaders that do not resist the Holy Spirit. Do not resist the Holy Spirit. And to the Ephesian church and Ephesian Christians, Apostle Paul said, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And Paul said to the Thessalonian church, do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is working in every person in different ways. We are not supposed to resist anything. We are not supposed to, I mean, uh, uh, to grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, we are not supposed to quench the Holy Spirit. Get the freedom from the Holy Spirit and whatever happens and whatever is, I mean, I mean, what, how the Holy Spirit is dealing with the people of God. I mean, let them enjoy that. Let them have that freedom to enjoy the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. That's what we understand from the Bible. We are not supposed to resist the Holy Spirit. We are not supposed to quench the Holy Spirit. We are not supposed to speak anything against the Holy Spirit and grieve the Holy Spirit. But we are supposed to be submitted in the hands of God and ready to obey the direction of the Holy Spirit. We will go to the fifth ministry of the uh, fifth ministry of the holy spirit that is the ministry of the giving assurance to the people of god ministry of the assurance I mean, this is the last point and i'll be uh, closing uh, the the message with that point the ministry of giving assurance okay let us read romans chapter 8 verse 16 romans chapter 8 verse 16 The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit. We have a spirit and the Spirit of the Lord is there and that the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit will testify with our spirit that we are the children of God of God. That means our human spirit must listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Our human spirit must listen the voice of the Holy Spirit. How can we listen the voice of the Holy Spirit in our life? You know, when you are tuned to the Holy Spirit, when you are preparing yourselves, sitting in the presence of God, many, you know, many a times the people are receiving the, the voice of the Holy Spirit when they are reading Bible, when they are meditating Bible, or sometimes when they are praying. Okay? When sometimes when they are uh, singing a song, okay, Patu Badam Badam, Prati Kimbadam, Prasangan Kirkam Badam, Vajram Vai Kimbadam, Meditatium Badok in the Ambatum, E. Parishat Mavinde, Ashabta Namaka Kelkan Sadikim. Hallelujah. It is possible. It is possible. You know, when a, 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 maybe a Sunday school child is coming from, and uh, when that, that child is sharing a memory verse, you can feel the voice of the Holy Spirit in your heart. That could happen. That happened many places. You know, when a small person is speaking something from the word of God, okay, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Speak to you. Because this is the word of God. Amen? This is the word of God. And here we see that our human spirit should listen the voice of the Holy Spirit in our heart. That's what we read here. You know, when, when you study about Jesus, Okay. Jesus, he had the testimony of the Holy Spirit in his spirit and he was constantly listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ was listening the constantly the voice of the Holy Spirit. When, you know, when you go to the temptation of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4, let us read Matthew chapter 4 verses 3 and 4. Amen. This is an identity problem, no? no this, the, the, the devil was coming to Jesus and saying, Hey Jesus, if you are a son of God, command to these stones to turn into the bread. This is actually the, the, the question of the identity. 
you know he was devil was asking hey if you are the son of god do this if you are the son of god you know this is a kind of temptation and it says they're provoking you no know, provoking and saying that okay if you are the son of god do this do this do this and if you are a son of god do one thing men you just jump from the top of the temple and uh, the angels of the lord will hold you and again showing all the all the wealth and all the properties of this world and saying that okay this is in my hands and if you just bow down before me i will give all these things to you if you are a son of god can you do that but jesus what was the, what was the reply of jesus jesus said i don't want any certification from you that i am the son of god because the spirit of god is always talking to me that i am a child of god i am the son of god that means the spirit of the lord was talking to jesus that you are the son of god you are the son of god and jesus was having that close connection with father and father god and the holy spirit was encouraging him that i mean you don't want to i mean bow down before any of this world i mean you are the son of god hallelujah when you have the confirmation and when you have the attestation of the holy spirit that you are a child of god nothing to worry about anything hallelujah and this is the assurance that the holy spirit is testifying into our spirit and communicating to our spirit that you are a child of god hallelujah praise god amen hallelujah and uh, even in roman chapter 8 verse 16 that's what we read that we have the assurance about the identity that we are the children of god we are the children of god hallelujah praise god and the temptation to prove our identity to other people you know in front of other people sometimes the devil will tempt us to prove your identity prove your identity okay you are saying that you are a pastor you are saying that you are a believer you are saying that you are a christian prove that identity we don't want to prove that we don't want to prove anything anything any of our identity to the people we have the proof and we have the evidence at that the spirit of the holy spirit is i mean speaking to me every day that you are a pastor and you are a believer and you are a christian and you are a child of god how many of you have that 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 spirit voice and how many of you have that assurance today in this morning i mean listening the voice of god and saying that okay hallelujah you are a child of god nothing to be worried about anything of this pro- problem anything of this affliction of this problem i mean in this world but god is speaking to us and the holy spirit is speaking to us that uh, i mean you are my child think about uh, i mean jesus christ and his baptism you know jesus christ and his baptism when we study about that in luke chapter 11 verse 13 luke chapter th- uh, 11 verse 13 Read that verse. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Amen. But about Jesus, we read in I mean, Luke chapter 3 verses 21 and 22 that He was strong in the Spirit, but He was praying for more Holy Spirit. Who was praying? Jesus was praying for more Holy Spirit. Listen. Listen. No, this is the point that we are going to conclude with that okay jesus christ was praying for more holy spirit is that correct you know at his baptism jesus was praying in luke chapter 3 verses 21 22 okay there we read jesus was praying when he was uh, when he was uh, going for the baptism during the time of the baptism jesus was praying is that uh, read that verse also then we will understand luke 3:21 3:21 luke 3:21 if anybody is have taken ah. jesus also being baptized and praying praying for what this is also being baptized and he was praying even standing in the water and he was praying when john you know john the baptist was giving the baptism for jesus jesus was standing there and he was praying praying for what for more holy spirit for more holy spirit that's what we read the next verse in the 22 yeah he was praying he was praying 
and the holy spirit descended upon jesus and there was a voice that this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased even in the priya putran even in prasadichirikkunu venna oru shabdam kettu so this is what we understand even jesus was praying for more holy spirit to do the ministry if even, even even jesus was expecting a great power of the holy spirit upon him to do the ministry after the baptism i mean how much more we need how much more we need that's what we read in luke chapter 11 verse 13 that how much more we need the holy spirit and the infilling of the holy spirit and if that is filled in us there is nothing can come inside our heart when if something is filled with something you know if, if a glass is filled with a water you know there is no space for anything to get inside right okay so nothing will come inside if there is no space but when we are giving the space for many other worldly pleasures and worldly things that is coming in that is coming in but wait and pray to the lord oh lord fill me with the spirit how many how many of you can pray that fill me oh lord with your spirit oh god then there is no vacancy there is no vacancy there is no space for any of this worldly things to enter into our inside our life hallelujah so let us pray that oh lord i mean fill me oh god fill me oh god i mean hallelujah i mean praise god hallelujah let us also pray that oh lord i need the more power of the holy spirit more presence of the holy spirit oh god if jesus could pray that if jesus prayed for more holy spirit and this is the right time that our people are going to pray for the more i mean power and presence of the holy spirit shall we all rise up on on our feet and uh, shall we are close our eyes in the presence of God and just pray together thank you master hallelujah 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 praise god hallelujah hallelujah this morning i mean the spirit of the lord was speaking to us that uh, we need more power we need more presence of the holy spirit hallelujah thank you master hallelujah you know the apostles of god the disciples of god they were always guided by the spirit of the lord they were always directed by the holy spirit and whatever they do it was only according to the direction of the holy spirit hallelujah this morning also the spirit of the lord is i mean i mean saying us through the word of god that men if you were surrendering your life in the presence of god if you were submitting your life in the presence of god to experience the power of the holy spirit and to experience uh, the presence of the holy spirit hallelujah the lord is there to fill you with the power of the holy spirit the lord is there to comfort you the spirit of the lord is to help you the situations that you are going through the situation and that you feel that oh lord i have nobody to help me oh god nobody to support you nobody to encourage you when we are going through the troublesome situation when we are going through the struggles in our lives hallelujah when we are going through the sickness in our lives there may not be nobody to help you but the spirit of the lord is with you the spirit of the lord is with you and the spirit of the lord is giving the assurance that you are the child of god hallelujah take that assurance in your life also and believe that the spirit of the lord is giving you the assurance that you are the child of god the world may tempt you the world may i mean question you about your identity hallelujah they have many questions the world is asking many question to you but you have an answer that i know i have the constant i mean i mean i mean a connection with the, the spirit of the lord i am listening i am listening my spirit is listening the voice of the holy spirit the direction of the holy spirit the presence of the holy spirit in my spirit that i have the assurance i am the child of god jesus was tempted by satan and satan was asking question about the identity of jesus christ jesus christ said no 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 i don't want any certificate from you i know that i am the son of god thank you master hallelujah we thank you master hallelujah this morning we also need if jesus was asking for more power of the holy spirit how much more we want to ask in the presence of god our lord we need that guidance of the holy spirit because we know that this spirit is the spirit of truth the spirit is the spirit of truth the spirit can i mean direct you the spirit can speak to you communicate to you 
that the holy spirit will guide you in all the truth in every situation of your life hallelujah let me read maybe one portion for you and we will pray and conclude this session hallelujah ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 to 19 that will encourage you all this morning that says that that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his great might hallelujah if god is filling every one of us with that holy spirit amen that will work out and that will do many miracles in our christian life in the coming days and may god bless all of us in in the hands of god to be used i mean for the glory of god in the coming days with the power and the presence of the holy spirit and i pray for that 